coach of the defending champs, the JMU Dukes, Katie Brooks. And coach, you won 29 games last season, got to a second straight NCAA tournament. We will get to all of that. Unfortunately, the top storyline for your team isn't the best of news coming into this campaign. The reigning CAA Player of the Year, Precious Hall, out for the season due to injury. It really hurts to lose somebody so good on the floor, but also such a good kid. I think, I think that's what people uh, misunderstand is that, yes, we have to replace her 20 points, but the hardest part is going to replace her leadership, her toughness, and uh, just her knowledge of our system. Uh, but, you know, Precious is doing wonderfully, uh, better than I could have ever imagined. Uh, she took the news uh, better than I did. You know, she cried for a couple minutes, uh, wiped her tears away, uh, and said, okay, what do we need to do next? You know, I want to start my rehab, and uh, I was still crying, you know, but, you know, <laughs> she handled the situation great. She's been in practice, helping out the younger kids, uh, being around, rehab's going wonderfully, and I'm very, very proud of the way she's handled the whole situation. And, Coach, you said that you were going to miss her leadership, but as you just said, she's been communicative with the young players how has her leadership transformed because of the injury? Well, you know, I, I told her that uh, we're losing a player, a tremendous player on the floor, but we're gaining a, a very valuable assistant coach. Mm -hmm. You know, we're, we're going to give her uh, some tasks to do during the game uh, just to keep her busy, keep her engaged. And you know, I said, if there is a silver lining that it happened now uh, so that she does get another year, you know, come right. back to red shirt, I think that she'll look at the game from a different perspective. I think that she'll see things from, uh, from a different light, from a coach's view, so to speak. And I think that's going to help her uh, next year. But it also is going to help kids coming out. You know, they'll get a they'll get a friendly voice. You know, not just hearing it from the coaches, but they hear it from their, one of their peers. And I think it really will help us as a program altogether. And you've been through something like this before with Nikki Newman a couple years ago. Right. Can you rely on that experience at all? Ironically, it was Nikki's injury that propelled Precious into the starting lineup. And uh, you know, so now obviously with Precious's injury, uh, next man up. And, you know, and, and we've asked kids to go out. We're not asking anyone to be Precious Hall. Uh, you know, I'm asking Jasmine Guathme to be a little bit more of Jasmine Guathme. I'm asking Angela Mickens to be a little bit more of Angela Mickens uh, because if they try to do anything that they're not capable of, then it's really going to put us in a deep hole. Uh, but these kids are going to step up. They have more prominent roles to fill. Uh, and, and I think that they're more than capable of doing so. And Jasmine Guathme. She was terrific in the past two championships for you, being most outstanding player in both of those championship runs for you. This year, she's been preseason picked number one. What are you expecting out of her in terms of her being herself this year? A whole lot more. <laughs> you know, ja Jasmine is, is one of the most unselfish players I've ever had. She's also the one of the most talented players I've ever had. Uh, from a skill set, you know, I, I, I think her skill set is even better than Tamara Young's, the one wow. I've had, and anyone wow. that I've had. Mm -hmm. uh, the only thing that she doesn't have, she didn't have that alpha female mentality. And, and rightfully so, you look at her situation. Uh, two years ago, we had Kirby Burkholder. You know, and I used to ask Jazz to do a little bit more. She says, Coach, I don't really need to do any more. I just want to, you know, help the team out. We have Kirby. And last year she said, Coach, I don't need to do any more. We have Precious. Now she has to do more. Right. Now she has to do more. And uh, she's been fantastic in practice, transitioning to that alpha female mentality uh, where she's going to look to score, be more aggressive. And I think what you're going to see is more of the kid that you saw in the tournament time mm -hmm. and stepping up and being aggressive, looking to score. Uh, she has a great skill set. She can play inside. Uh, she can handle the ball. She can play on the outside. She can shoot the three. So we're going to utilize her in so many different fashions this year. And it's, uh, it's, it's exciting for her to get an opportunity to do this. It's just unfortunate that it, it has to come with Precious's injury. Right. With JMU head coach Kenny Brooks defending champion Dukes. And it is a testament to the depth of your program that you lose the reigning CAA player of the year. And yet you still have two more preseason all CAA selections. We talked about Guathme, but how about Angela Mickens, consummate point guard, a pest defensively, and just a distributor on offense? Well, you know, Precious is the reigning player of the year. Jasmine uh, is the preseason player of the year. But I think Muff Mickens is the most important player, uh, maybe even in the conference. Uh, she makes us go. She makes us go, and you know, I, I kid with Precious a lot that she should cut her most uh, the Player of the Year trophy in half and give the other half to to Muff Mickens, uh, just because she's so dynamic. She runs our team. She understands exactly what I want. Uh, does it even better than I that I anticipate? But tremendous player is all over the court. She's playing extremely well right now. I, th I think she's upping her scoring uh, ability right now, and she's looking to be a little bit more aggressive. But she's having a great fall, and she understands what she has to do. So I'm very very proud of her.
Last thing, Ashley Perez, how much does she have to step up? She was off the bench last year, but she's a scorer with a high ceiling. She is. Um, you know, Ashley came in, again, very unselfish, just wanted to fit in with the program. And uh, she could have done more last year. Uh, this year, she's going to have to. You know, even with, with Precious, I thought she was going to have a breakout season. She's capable, of, as you saw in the NCAA tournament, she scored 20 points against Ohio State. And uh, she's going to have to be that type of aggressive player all year long, and she's more than capable of doing so. Four championships in the past six seasons for your program. The expectation level is there. How has the team embraced that? Well, yeah, I think they embrace it because they don't want to let JMU Nation down. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it, it, it's no, no pressure, you know, but they, they understand, you know, they signed up for this. They signed up to come to play for championships, uh, and I think they're more than capable of doing it. And, and I'm excited about this team. We're, we're nowhere near what we're going to be uh, once the season's over with. We're still trying to invent ourselves. You know, we've had to scrap it and reinvent ourselves already a couple of times this year, uh, but they work hard. They work hard. They're very talented, and uh, I'm looking forward to what they can do this year. Well, it's been more than a decade since you've won fewer than 24 games. You're going for the three-peat this year. We appreciate your time and good luck. Uh, thank you for having me. Head coach Kenny Brooks of the JMU women's basketball program, obviously the reigning champs. We'll